Hey all, Emox here. Now yesterday I created a quick demonstration video of my new Auto Dynamic Bones plugin. Uh, now that plugin was kind of good at showing you how easily and how fast you can set up Dynamic Bones on any avatar. Um, however, it didn't go into much detail as to how everything worked. So this is the video where I explain basically everything about the plugin. So let's get started. Uh, unlike the last version of the plugin, where it was very kind of bulky, you had to open up windows, you had to drag and drop the model, and um, just wasn't very intuitive. Um, I've developed this uh, plugin, this version of the plugin from the ground up, uh, with usability and simplicity in mind. So, if anyone's asking why it's not a, a free update and it is a new version of the plugin, it is because I developed this version of the plugin. Uh, plugin from scratch. It's basically, uh, if you look at the code of it, there is nothing identical. Um, it is it is all very different, um, and I did spend a lot of time on it. So, uh, as such, it is its own uh, version of the plugin with its own store page. So, uh, to begin with, it doesn't use string manipulation like the old one anymore um, to find the bones. Uh, instead, it hooks into the animator component. So when you do use the plugin, you need to make sure that your avatar uh, animation type is set to humanoid. On top of that, if we go configure, you want to make sure everything inside of um, the, config the configuration window here is green. You want to make sure the upper chest isn't assigned, but the, the normal chest is. Um, basically, if the animator window here is showing red or anything broken, then the dynamic uh, the auto dynamic bone plugin that I made will also not function correctly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so just make sure that your avatar is in fact configured uh, correctly to animate uh, inside Viacha. So, with that being said, let's go to this model. And it is now a component system opposed to that whole bulky window system that I had before. Um, and the beauty of it uh, being a component system is uh, you can now save the prefab uh, all the values um, uh, in the in the plugin are saved uh, so I can save the scene I can close unity when I come back all the auto dynamic burn values will be the same just one thing to note uh, the VRChat SDK will want you to strip this uh, script from your avatar before you upload it uh, you can remove it, all the bones will work fine, just note it might be best to keep prefab so that you can always go back to that model and edit the bones uh, in bulk rather than setting this one up all the time again. So like I said, it does use the animator. So when you first add it, it'll give an error and it'll say link or add animator. If the model does not have an animator and you click fix error, it will add its own animator. If it does do that, you want to make sure that the avatar assigned is the correct one for your model. Otherwise, if we click Fix Error, it will assign that animator to your autodynamic bones. Now, after that, it'll want to set up some variables. Again, this is just some internal plugin thing. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that. Just click Setup, and if any, everything went uh, as according to plan, uh, you're now able to use the Dynamic Bones plugin. Now, the first field we see is the name. Uh, this really is nothing. Uh, the only thing this changes is the name of your object. Uh, so I'm just going to say test one two three. Now, right from the uh, right from the start, as soon as you add this uh, this plugin, um, if your naming conventions for your avatar is set up correctly, we can just click that update button, and you can see it's already done some things for us, but it doesn't seem to have done everything. So let's go into play mode and see what it has done for us. So if we move the model, you can see, okay, well, it's added all our colliders, obviously. It's added our hair to the, the our front hair, not our back, and it's added our tail and ears. Now, one of the good things um, about this plugin, compared to the last, is you can edit everything real time in the uh, play mode of Unity. So if I want to add the rest of the hair, this is the same model I used in the last demonstration, by the way, so it's not quite set up correctly, and I've done this on purpose so I can kind of show you guys exactly how to set it up if your model does not quite meet uh, the normal standards. Um, so, as you can see, the prefix for the rest of the strands of hair on this model is T underscore. So, 
that's what we're going to add. T underscore for custom prefix. Now, uh, for the custom prefix, it does automatically change everything to lowercase. So you don't need to worry about adding capitals or anything like that. So as soon as we add that prefix, we can click update. And look at that. It's added the bones to the rest of the hair in play mode. And we can view those changes live. Now, I'm not quite happy with that. That's, you know, looks like jelly. Uh, so, uh, the plugin now has a actual preset system. It doesn't just have three presets you can choose. Uh, you can save your preset, you can load your presets, you can give your presets to other people who own the plugin. Um, all presets are saved within the Auto Dynamic Bones preset folder. Now, uh, I want to go ahead and we can use any of these, maybe here too. Let's load that preset and make sure you click update after you load the preset. There we go. The hair looks a little bit better. Maybe a little bit uh, has too much sway, but for now, you, for now that'll do. So the next thing we have the boobs. Now, uh, this model has the one bone set up for both the bum and the boobs. Uh, basically what that means is there's only a single bone controlling the left and right breast and the left and right uh, bum cheeks. So, how do we get them to move? Uh, we simply need to add some length uh, to those bones. So in boobs we'll add maybe a 0.1 in length and if we click update you can see that there's now an extra part to those breast bones and they now move. That might be a little bit too close as it's uh, getting a little bit jittery. So maybe we'll give it a length of 0.4 and click update. Uh, whoops, let me get back there. There we go, that's a bit better. So um, let's go back to the boobs tab. Now I want to add a little bit more damping, maybe a 0.7 and we'll give it a 0.4 inert and click update again. There we go, the boobs look all right. Um, now, let's go ahead and do the butt. Now again, uh, the end length is basically something we need to change for the butt to start moving. Uh, I have some presets for everything already, so from now on, I'm just going to select the presets I need, click load preset, you can see it's changed the end length, and we click update. Might be a bit hard to see here, but you can see that those bones for the butt are now moving. I will give a demonstration with the colliders later so um, you can see everything works. Next up, we have the tail. Once again, I have a tail preset that I am going to, to use. Uh, make sure to click, uh, did I load it? Yeah, I did. Make sure to click update. And there we go, that is updated. Awesome. Now we have the ears. Once again, I have a single preset for the ears. Uh, however, um, it's, a, it's a good starting point. So I'm gonna load that in and press update. We can now see that the ears look fine. Fantastic. Now we have this custom tab. Now this is different to the other plugin because you couldn't really add custom bones on the other plugin. This one, you can. So for example, I just made this weird thing, um, took me two seconds in Blender to model, and it's got an armature on it. So if I wanna get dynamic burns working on this, uh, basically I need to go into that custom object, which is here, it's just called Untitled, and you need to drag the armature of that object into the custom array field here. Now you can see, as soon as we click Update, all those bones are added. Uh, we can go ahead and move. And you can see it's now working. The radius might be a bit too large. I didn't apply any scale in Blender, so that's why it's all large like this. So we can go ahead and just click update. And there you go, the radius for those is now smaller. You can see I did a horrible job <laughs> white painting this, but it works. You know, it's just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so now we have a few other things. We have options for the colliders. Uh, so maybe I want the uh, the radius for the hand colliders to be a slightly larger. We might go for a four. We click update. You can see those colliders did change. Um, just so I can uh, show you a little bit easier when I go to move these around, I'm gonna actually make the hand colliders quite large. Now we have the 
uh, the uh, the head collider, and this will of course stop all the hair uh, moving within the head. So maybe we'll go for a point zero nine. You can see when I when we applied that, all the hair kind of just like separated from her head. Again, might need to do some tweaking so that the hair doesn't continuously pull and push like this, so it doesn't bob around. Uh, now we have the body. Again, I might do a 0 0.09. Okay. You can see, it's a bit hard to see because of all the bones now, but there is in fact a collider in her chest. And we have the hips. Again, we will do hips maybe slightly smaller. We'll do seven. Okay. So now that collider should help with the tail not clipping through uh, the center of her body. Okay, so now everything is pretty much set up. You know, this can go as assuming you have your VSC avatar descriptor all set up. This is now ready for VR chat. Now, uh, just a quick demonstration of the colliders and easiest way to do that, just like last time, is to unfortunately move her wrist around, which may give some people nightmares. So you can see that if I touch, that's actually uh, behind her here. Let's. Uh, Oh, and I've lost the wrist. You can see that her uh, bum is interacting with that collider. Her tail also interacts with the hand collider. You have all the hair that interacts with that collider. And of course you have the breasts that interact with the collider. This is for both hands as well. There we go. Uh, you have the ears, which interact with the hand collider. And then of course you got the weird custom object I made in Blender that should also interact with the collider. Great, so now you've set up everything in play mode. There is an important thing to note here because of the way Unity functions with weird serialization things, if we close play mode, none of these changes will have been saved. Now, because of the way the plugin is made, the simplest solution to this is to right click the component, copy component, exit play mode. You can see that the model has reverted back to what it was. Now, if we right click autodynamic bones, paste component values and click update. Now, all those changes that we made in play mode are permanent. You can make this model a prefab, you can save the scene and come back to it. It will always be the same. So that's basically it for the plugin. Hopefully this demonstration of how everything works came in handy. Hopefully this saves you guys uh, a lot of time making your avatars. Um, I know it saved me a fairly uh, good amount of time. Um, like I said in the last video, actually, did I say in the last video? I'm not sure. I've set it in the description, but uh, if I was to set all the dynamic burns by hand, one by one, um, it might take me around about an hour to, to get it functioning um, perfectly, uh, maybe two hours, depending on the complexity of the model and how many dynamic burns we have. But this is... Yeah, it basically changes everything in bulk for you. Like I said, we don't even need to be in play mode. We can just be in the normal editor here. And if we just want to change the radius for all the hair, maybe make it larger, we just change it. We click update. Maybe this is a new preset I want. Let's just, again, give it some random name just to demonstrate. We click save preset. And in the presets, we should now have that as a selectable preset. Now, do note that all these presets can be used for any of the other bones. The only reason that they are prefixed with hair or ears or butt is because it is saved like that depending on what tab you are using. So we can load that same preset and click update and it changes it accordingly. Alrighty, well, I hope this helps uh, everyone. Um, oh, there is one quick thing to note. Uh, if you are selling your model and using it for commercial use, you need to make sure you remove the Autodynamic Bones plugin before you ship it to your customers. Now, just to demonstrate, I am going to maybe make a copy of this. 
and disable it. Uh, just to demonstrate, if we remove uh, the autodynamic bones and go into play mode, it will still function. You do not need the editor extension for it to uh, for it to work. Just note that once that plugin is removed, it will no longer uh, you will no longer be able to edit any of these bones. Okay. Um, oh, actually, there is one last thing. So if we go back to that uh, copy I made. We have this destroy all dynamic bones in scene. This is exactly what it sounds like. Anything that has dynamic bones in your current scene will be destroyed. So let's create another duplicate. And let's disable this one. So if you have a disabled object and you click destroy all bones, you can see it's destroyed everything. This player, if uh, this avatar, if we go back into play mode, has nothing. It has no jiggle, has no physics, nothing left. Uh, however, this one that was disabled still does. But now, if we go and destroy all dynamic bones back on the other model, you'll see that it also affected this model. So that is just something to note. Uh, if you have other avatars in the scene, please make sure you set the active of those objects to false so that the plugin does not interact with them. Alrighty, well, that's it for the demonstration of the plugin. Again, hopefully it helps you guys a great deal, and I will see you in the next video.